What's up, guys? Joel Benavides with the Block Squad Podcast. It is the 25th of March, 2019, and it is 10.20 a.m. here in uh, gloomy, overcast, cool, and slightly humid San Antonio, Texas. Uh, and uh, we're going to get on with the 45th, let me see, correction, for, yeah, 45th podcast, 45th episode of Block Squawk. And so, uh, so let's get started. Right now, we're looking at the. Oh, by the way, if you notice that there's like a, like a little pink hue down here, um, that's not a filter. There's actually like a, like a grow lamp. I, I, I got a wild hair up my ass one time to buy a grow lamp because they were selling them at, um, at uh, what you call it at Lowe's, and I was at Lowe's for like something else. And so I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. It was like 20 bucks, right? It's probably not like the best grow lamp ever, but let me see if I can show you guys. There it is. Can't really see it, but it's got like some blue lights in there, which is kind of neat. Anyway, so I'm playing with it right now. Now I'm not going to be able to get it back. There we go. So uh, make sure my levels are all good and let's get on with it. So we're looking at coin 316. And uh, again, kind of a checkered market, n no huge standouts. Let's take a, a quick look because BTS is looking especially green. Uh, yeah, BitShares uh, is trading at six cents, and that's up 17 and a quarter point for the day. Uh, XTZ is also a little more green than the others, uh, up 5.8%, uh, and uh, it's trading at 71 cents. We'll get we'll get on with all that right now. Also, uh, basic attention is down by five and nearly five and a half points at uh, 20 cents so we'll take a look at all that uh some of these numbers are ag i'm not sure where coin 360 aggregates its data but i don't think it's uh coin market cap so but we'll take a look at it uh here in a moment let me bring up the chart for you guys we're looking at btc usd on the hourly over at coinbase so and uh there's a little bit of fuckery going on right here the last few hours we'll get we'll, we'll get into that in a moment <clears throat> so uh i am moving us over to apogee crypto uh which is just an aggregator for coin market cap data uh, and we are going to get on with the top 10. I'll make a quick mention. Let's do let's do the crypto 20 and then I'll I'll, I'll burn through uh, the top 10. I'm, I'm kind of pissed because Cardano unseated Tron for the 10th place. Uh, but but we'll we'll get on with that in, in a minute. Uh, there's some news on on Tron too. Uh, so Tezos in at 20th, Ethereum Classic in at 19th, Neo in at 18th. Ontology ONT in at 17th, Maker in at 16th, and PowerCoin and Dash are in the 15th slot. Uh, IOTA, Myota uh, in at 14th, Monero in at 13th, BSV in at 12th, and Tron in 11th. I'm going to do Tron part of the top 10. I like Cardano too. I just, uh, I don't know. I wish we could get rid of one of these. I wish we could get, rid of, get Bitcoin Cash out of there and then, you know, it would be perfect. Um, so let's burn through these, uh, these top coins real quick uh, on a quick squawk, and then we'll talk about the news and the chart. So, uh, Tron coming in 11th by market cap TRX trading at 2.3 cents. That's down 2.7 points on the day, up 0.64 points on the week. And 24 hour traded volume was 263.9 mil. Cardano ADA in at 10th trading at 6 cents, down 3.15 points on the day, up 20.44 points on the week. 24 hour traded volume, 75.1 million. Stellar XLM in at 9th by market cap trading at 10.4 cents. That's down 1.83 points on the day, down 5.41 points on the week. 24 hour traded volume, 176.6 million. Tether USDT in the 8th, trading at 1 and 1. Binance, oh, I'm sorry, Tether was uh, 24 hour trade volume on Tether was 8 million, guys. Binance Coin BNB in at 7th by market cap, trading at 16 and 87, down 1.26 points on the day. 
up 8.15 points on the week. 24-hour trade volume, 212.2 million. By, uh, Bitcoin Cash, BCH, in at sixth by market cap, trading at 163 and 54, down 1.2 points on the day, up 1.28 points on the week. 24-hour trade volume, 373.3 million. EOS, by the same symbol in at fifth, trading at 3 and 66, up a, uh, over a quarter of a point for the day and down two and two and one quarter points for the week 20 uh 24 hour trade volumes 1.3 million litecoin ltc in at fourth trading at 60 and a nickel down 0.11 points on the day up 0.08 points on the week 24 hour trade volume 1.8 billion uh xrp by the same symbol ripple in at third by market cap trading at 30 cents down 0.8 points on the day up or i'm sorry down 2.92 points on the week 24 hour trade of volume 681 million ethereum eth and eth in its second by market cap trading at 136 and 73 down uh just over half a point at 0.52 percent for the day and uh down 1.83 points on the week 24 hour trade of volume 4 billion bitcoin btc in at first by market cap trading at 4025 and 16 cents that's up slightly at 0.03 points on the day also up 0.03 points for the week. 24-hour trade volume was 9.2 billion and market cap at 70.8 million. That's going to do it for us uh, right on time uh, with the music. And uh, we're going to jump on over to the news real quick because I wanted to talk about some trending stories that have been going on the last day, last 24 hours. And so let's take a look at that. So two hours ago from Cointelegraph.com, e-commerce firm... Rakuten, and they have like some commercial that's like trying to teach people how to say it, but I'm probably going to say it wrong because I, I didn't pay attention. Rakuten readies cryptocurrency exchange for April launch after name change. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, Forbes article on Cardano. I didn't have a chance to look at it, but they're talking about it over on um, Reddit. That was uh, four hours ago. Also highly syndicated. Also highly syndicated uh, is a story from CryptoGlobe.com six hours ago. Uh, they say Tron becomes available for trading to eToro's 10 million users. And you think that that would help the price out a little bit, but there's also some negative uh, Tron news. We'll get to it in a minute. Uh, 12 hours ago from CryptoSlate.com, Cisco is, expects 10 billion blockchain market by 2021, 10% of world GDP stored on chain by 2027. Yeah, you know, like, um, I mean, take a look. We're looking at the chart. If you look over here on the right hand side, you see the watch list. This is a total crypto market cap uh, aggregated by a trading view. And what are we at? Like 1.3 trillion right now. So, uh, and 50% of that, most of, mo most of the time it's around 50, 52% of that is Bitcoin. And, and we're, you know, at market lows here. Uh, so, uh, money is flowing in, uh, we're at the bottom of the market. Uh, eventually there will more than likely, uh, be a, a, a growth period it may take some time. Uh, but yeah, I could see that. Um, I could see. Uh, 10 percent of GDP um, I mean what B uh, gold is like at what's the market cap on gold like seven trillion something like that so anyway uh, 19 hours ago from the daily Bitcoin can easily pay yeah, yeah, that's what I was because uh, I had read this earlier uh, Bitcoin cash can easily pass gold's 7.5 trillion market cap says crypto investment titan mike novogratz yep yep, yep, yep. uh 21 hours ago from uh, trustnodes.com close to half of justin sun that justin sun is the ceo of tron guys uh close to half of his uh new followers revealed as fake and uh you know that's not uncommon on twitter you know especially if uh you're active in the way that Justin Sun is active on Twitter. Uh, he's been criticized uh, fiercely in the past for his for his uh, for his Twitter activity. Uh, I don't want to say the guy's. I don't know. Like, takes a certain amount of discretion uh, when you're on social media now, right? Like, uh, it's easy to. Uh, just kind of get in the grind and then you start spamming yourself. I've, I've made that mistake before. Uh, 
and uh, and it doesn't bring any organic followers. I mean, if you're just sitting there, you know, tweeting out your thoughts and retweeting cool articles on Twitter and stuff like that, like only 20% of your of your um, uh, followership is going to end up as being organic. So uh, that doesn't uh, that doesn't strike me as like especially odd. Uh, I don't think he was doing it on purpose, uh, but you know, I mean, it, it is what it is, you know. And and the guy does have kind of like a reputation on social media for being a bit of a uh, a spammer. I, but like I said, I don't think he's do, doing it on purpose. You know, he's just a young guy trying to get his hustle on. So, let's get on with it. Let's take a look over here at Bitcoin USD, Bitcoin against the dollar. So, uh, I'm not going to go through this like long, elaborate recap of the last couple of months. Uh, if you want to do that, uh, you can head on over to YouTube or Anchor and look at episode 44. And I kind of went over this stuff in general, but... I'll give you the gist. So you can see basically before what we're looking at. Okay, so we're right now we're looking at uh, the 25th of February on till today, which is the 25th of March. So we're looking at a month, right? Before this, we were kind of like in a very steady, convincing bullish pattern when looking at the hourly chart. We talked about uh, getting pigeonholed into, into one time frame. So it's a good idea to go and hit that daily candle, you know, and realize that we're kind of flat right now. Relative to Bitcoin's performance in the past, we're kind of in accumulation. However, we are in, in an uptrend. And the reason that we look at Bitcoin so much is because the crypto market tends to follow Bitcoin. Uh, I know some people will look at total, right, which if, you, if you're on trading view, type in uh, dollar sign total and you'll get the total market cap so i mean all these charts kind of follow in very similar fashion but it's kind of like uh uh common knowledge that that everything follows bitcoin so that's what that's why we choose to look at bitcoin i personally look at bitcoin on coinbase just because it's kind of like the de facto u.s exchange um in terms of volume a lot of people will do bitfinex also but um anyway uh, enough uh enough of that so we were in this bullish trend i use that trend to draw this rather large pitchfork and it revealed that we had been i think up to that point we were right here that this this kind of trend that we were in from the 5th of march to the 10th of march was like kind of operating right along the upper lines of this trend channel defined by this pitchfork. And that was right around price 3867 approximately, you know, up and down. And so I started paying attention to it. Um, and, uh, and we started going through these series of movements. Started like uh, drawing projections and, uh, and I was doing real well. Uh, and uh, last couple of episodes on 43 and 44, I pointed this out, and that is that we were kind of in, in, in two formations at once. We were in an upward trend channel, right? Had been since, since the beginning of March, basically. Uh, but also, we had um, kind of put ourselves into like this horizontal uh, so, uh, zone of support and resistance, right? Where... Uh, where we were trading between 39.40 approximately and 40.40 approximately. So we're kind of trading in there, in, in like uh, within that level. Uh, and I said, you know, take a look at the chart because we can't stay in this upward trend channel and then stay in this horizontal um, support and resistance zone forever at the same time because eventually one is going to win out. Uh, we talked about that, and it looks like that has occurred. Uh, I kept on kind of trying to to draw out, like, or pull out, like, this kind of, like, support line further and further and further, but it became clear to me within the last 
uh, day that that wasn't going to happen. Um, so, so we're definitely within that support and resistance line. I think that has won out in terms of validity. Uh, so we're trading uh, uh, between uh, 39.42 and uh, to be on the safe side, uh, 40.37. So that's where we're at, we're, and we're kind of like in this horizontal. You know, we we may be platforming for a while here, guys. Uh, platform or rectangle? That's kind of like a like a long horizontal consolidation move. Uh, but I mean, we'll see. We'll see. We'll have to see. There it is. Overall, when you look at the daily chart, we're still flat. So I'm paying attention more now to this. However, I will continue to lend a little bit of credence to uh, the uh, lines of deviation along this pitchfork and uh, see if we bounce off of them. Uh, also, uh, I mean, we've got to be whipsawing on some of the moving averages on the daily. Let's take a look at that real quick. Yeah, so uh, right now we're well below the 200 still. Um, and um, we're maintaining above the 100 day moving average. Uh, also the 50. Pretty much all of them. The only one we're playing with is the ADA EMA, which I really don't pay attention to on the daily chart. So we're, 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 we're above uh, a lot of... Uh, a lot of prominent moving averages, simple moving averages, guys. So um, I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We're, we face significant resistance at what I say last time around 4200, 4106, right? And then um, and then we're we're kind of like in a, a new world around 4188. Not new, but um, and then I think there was some. There was some shit going down at 4,200. And I would say if we continue to make higher highs uh, and higher lows, we from a support and resistance uh, mindset, we'll be out, out of the woods probably around 4,411, 4,412. Uh, absolutely unequivocally but i mean we'll see we'll see it's just gonna it's gonna depend on how like support and resistance plays out highs and lows the whole bit so but we continue to monitor uh we continue to cross more and more moving averages um and uh we are in a in kind of an upward trend now this sideways movement uh, depending on how it works out, it may push us down over the next few days. Um, stochastics uh, have already kind of crossed above the over overbought line and are, are, are going down because of the sideways move that we just talked about. Um, so we may see the price fall over the next few days uh, or at least uh, go sideways. So we'll have to wait and see. Um, but... Uh, but uh, I mean, that, that's it. That's all I got for you guys today. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, Block Squawk is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, if you're listening on the podcast, you've heard this already. So, and for those of you who do listen on the podcast, if you're ever on YouTube, you can just type in Block Squawk and I'm there. Most of the time, the most recent episode comes up. Uh, if you're on YouTube and you want to listen on your car, uh, download the Anchor app, or you can listen on Spotify or Stitcher, Radio Public. I'm supposed to be on iOS. I'm kind of kind of fighting with these guys because um, I was supposed to be on there a long time ago, and they're like they reset something and it didn't work. So I'm kind of jumping through hoops with them right now on iOS. 
So um, if you're an iOS exclusive person and you only listen on podcasts on iOS, I apologize. I'm working on it, um, but uh, we'll, we'll get on there eventually. I will keep you guys up to date on that. Apple can be kind of a pain in the, you know what, sometimes. So that's going to do it for us. Uh, 1040 a.m. in San Antonio. Universal time now is uh, 1540 UTC on the same date, the 25th of March. And uh, we're going to get out of here. I, uh, I have some yard work to do. I got to go out there and finish the shed. I've been struggling getting this shed done. There's like a thousand screws that I got to like screw in and it's just like really poorly written instructions and but um but I'm just about done. I just have to mount the doors on there. So uh take care of that and uh I'll be monitoring, you know, on my device out there and uh come back to you guys if uh if anything comes up. See you guys later. Good luck trading.